Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Pardon me, that's loud. I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Nuns Thousand X flames. We must return to Queen Marwyn. The Black Hand has been here. I can feel it. Lothario. So yeah, I forgot that that wasn't the the final boss. Um, though I will say the true final boss is still relatively unimpressive. You know, it's not like a fantastic. The thing about this game is that like the story missions and the story of this game don't exactly let like let the um, game strength shine. Because like there's a lot of cool stuff in this game. You see, I'm like getting pretty hefty here, right? I still have another ability point. I'm gonna beat the game without like. A good chunk of these. Yeah, I remember in my original uh, like playthrough of this back when it came out, not when it came out. Oh yeah, I didn't finish that um, that story. But Shadow of War, um, I was told it has import saves, and like having a. Um, Having import saves is like, well, now I just got to play the other ones, you know? Like, I wanted to play Dragon Age 2, because Fenris was in that game. Uh, and it was a good decision to play Dragon Age 2. Um, but the thing is, is that I had a... I, I really wanted to play Dragon Age 1 first just because of its import saves. And so in the same way, I was like, well... I'd be stupid to play, you know, the sequel without playing the first one if I can import my save. But yeah, like... I don't know if um, I've mentioned this, but like... There is an absolutely fantastic commercial that like... It's just the one about the guy who like... Like, there are two guys. In one commercial, there's a guy who, like... Uh... Like, it goes backwards through his life, and it's an orc just, like, ruining his, like, date, and, like, sinking his boat, and... Just being a real dick to him throughout his life. Until it goes back to him as a teenager, and it's him ruining the orc's life, and the orc's like... Mm, and he's gonna remember that. And then the counterpart is, um... Pause this if you want to read it. Uh, and then the counterpart is a different commercial um, about an orc saving uh, a person's life. These Uruk will not desecrate. For them, beauty exists only to be destroyed. You are far. Uh, there's a wall, right? X-ray vision will do that to a guy. But yeah, it's like uh, it's like an orc like stopping uh, a man from turning off his father's life support. And an orc, like, stopping someone on a date from choking. Like, catching a guy who falls off the roof. Yeah, there you go. Um, I feel like the crown that Caleb Bimber wears also kind of messes with his uh, aesthetic. But and, and then the commercial ends with, like, you saving an orc's life from, from another orc that's trying to betray him. And he nods at you and it's like, you know, he'll remember that. And that's an amazing way to, like, sell me on something. And then I saw that, and then I got in. And I played the game, and I 100 percented it, in fact. Um, it is exhausting to 100 percent this game. Because of, like, all the, like, extra challenge shit. Like, just beating the game and beating all the missions and finding all the collectibles is one thing. But all the additional extra challenges are like, ugh, god, you know? Um, but yeah, let's do it. Let me just, uh... Sorry. Still here, I didn't think of you, you know. We will be together soon. Forever.
All the warriors coming back for the final mission. But we took it from them. Yeah, like if Caleb Rimbor were like stop wearing that and let his bangs go. I don't know. See, look at that. It's handsome. So the DLC is that. Even Keller Boomer is getting a little crackhead about the ring, you know? So it's a little unclear of what the actual powers of the ring are sometimes. Because normally it's a thing of like, oh, well, it turns you invisible. Should I have not come back in? Um, I kind of always thought that it was like a thing where it like gives you your heart's desire. Because um, I think Sam uses it to turn into like a super, like, like a tall, like superhuman warrior. I think it's just like an elf he turns into, but whatever. Um, and Sauron obviously uses it to like gain power and you can see that when Sauron's wearing it like he's it's not like he's Invisible, you know, so I feel like it maybe it does something based on like the wearers like species And it would do something different for an orc or a human or an elf or a hobbit or whatever But I feel like it does something based on what you want and it just so happens that Gollum and the rest of the hobbits like Celebrimbor and the Hobbits all have the plan of just like, oh, we'll just use guerrilla warfare, you know? Because Celebrimbor wants to be a sneaky guy. I come for you, Lord of Gifts. Yeah. Oh, it's such a... Oh, it's so good. I can turn that down a little more. Um, who is this? I can't even look at the army now. I guess this is the... um. This is the uh, the art the uh, the Uden army. Do I have anything? I do. I like this because like normally the the combat is built around like you build up your thing and you cash it in. But with this, it's like you build up your thing and then if you don't cash it in, double damage. Um. So that might be useful. So I think I'll grab that. Whoops. That's 14. Hell yeah. I wonder if this battle would be even more one-sided. First talent of the hand. Oh yeah. Gave the witch on the shore her freedom. The freedom to die with her people. Ah! 
Maybe we should just uh, dismount. I can kill efficiently from my own feet. What about you? You immune? You're not immune. That's good. Let's uh, get rid of some of you then, huh? Second Talon. But yeah, so I think like... Um, maybe it's a thing where like... Sauron wants power. And so being... Hate of Burns, nice. And so being Sauron and putting on the ring, you get more power. But Celebrimbor would just want to use, um... Like, cool stylish stealth tactics anyway. Third talent of the hand. See, this is nice. This is something of what you'd, like, want. Because, like, you want the ability to, like... You want to get in big knuckle, like, drag-out brawls, you know? Because, like, that's what this game's about. Nice. Hell yeah. The boys are strong. I didn't even touch that guy. I didn't even look at him. They just went in on him, I guess. Who are you, fourth town? Yeah. I hate that beard. I've seen a couple orcs with that beard. It's just, it's not good. Oh, right. Well, another one down. Oh, man. All right. Let's get a little top off here. I can't imagine those guys will be, like, hella strong. God damn you. Oh, actually, my face covers it, so that's fine. But I can see that my friend Robert is playing Elden Ring. God damn him. Though, I found out that there is a crippling, crippling game ending soft lock where, like, you can get to the final boss and then you won't be able to, like, go fast it. Sauron is still weak. Without the power of the One Ring or the Ringmaker, he cannot take form. He will be trapped within Mordor, no more than an eye of flame bound to his dark tongue. In case anyone's the curious as to why he looks like that, there you go. And none will avenge me. I like... Kind of an odd thing to mention that none will avenge him, but it kind of works for the character. I like it. Can I? It's a ladder, guys, right? I should be able to. Thank you. All right. Like, we've seen this wall the whole time and we've never gone in. That's cool. Hey, you can play as that guy if you want. Really, Sauron? Did someone drag that rock here?
Sauron is still such a good design. Nope, oh, see, a little sneaky <sighs> gameplay there. The Dark Lord gave you a second chance. To stand by his side. Now I give you no choice. We shall be sealed together in death. So be it. Ugh, gross, dude. Return to me. Turns out Calibrimbo was just the band-aid holding your neck shut. We made this model and we're gonna use it, damn it. Straight down, Johnny! I cannot hold it for much longer! Well, that's the game, everyone. Let me do my traditional thing of... Whoops. Leave that where it is. Thank you. Thank you. Let me big myself up here. So, yeah, that's the game. Um, Like I said, the reason that I... <laughs> Like I said, the final boss is uninspiring. And the reason that I thought that the final boss was that other guy, where you stealth him three times and then kill him in a cutscene, was because I forgot that you actually do kill Sauron in a cutscene, where you just do some QTEs. And like, that's lame, you know? Like, that's a lame way to end the game. Um, like I said, the actual... Let me turn this even more down. It'll be very quiet. But the actual final boss of the real game is a lot cooler because the real final boss is stored in the um, uh, the Bright Lord DLC, um, which talks more about Celebrimbor because you just play as Celebrimbor in the Second Age in the the space between um, like the the DLC starts on that one cutscene where Celebrimbor just goes and yoinks the ring away. And then it ends um, on the other cutscene we saw, where uh, the ring just back to Sauron. I feel like it must make that noise. Scott Cawford, Ben McCraw, Gregor Orlando, David Sallow, and Jeff Spock. You did all right with the um, the text and the lore. And then, hey, Daniel Abnett, good job on the Nem system. The Nem system? Yeah, that's good. But yeah, like the final boss, like you don't really get the chance to use all of the cool stuff in the game against it. Um, and like sometimes that's the, the way that this game is is a problem like take something like KOTOR 2 
or um, like Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, where the more you use a certain thing, the more counters enemies will develop to it. Like if you're just gonna rush in and shotgun a bunch of guys, then they'll start wearing body armor hard vests. If you get a bunch of headshots with your tranquilizer pistol, then they'll ship in a bunch of plastic bike helmets and they'll be like, these things are stupid. And then you'll try to shoot one in the head with your tranquilizer pistol and it'll bounce off and they won't notice. And it'll be like, my God. Classic Aqua Zombie comic, pardon me. Um, but yeah, like if, if the actual game is something that can develop to the point where like every enemy counters you by just having a million health and being immune to everything, then you might make a final boss that you can't kill. Um, and the thing is, the sequel to XCOM, which I did LP, I did LP XCOM. I've not LP'd the sequel yet, but um, XCOM sequel, War of the Chosen. Or no, it's just XCOM 2, and I think the DLC is War of the Chosen. Um, but it has a mechanic like that, where you have specific enemies that will act like nemesises to you. They'll gain certain abilities, they'll gain new immunities and stuff like that. And it's, you know, their own thing because they actually could not use the regular nemesis system, just poured it over. Um, but the other thing is, is that, yes, enemies can just keep developing harder and harder stuff to make them almost unkillable. Like, they can be killed, but it'll be a pain to do it because the thing about XCOM is that it's a game built in order to have you play it again and again. Like, losing is sometimes just a fact of the matter in XCOM. You will lose you will be unable to beat the game in this save file, so just start a new one. And, like, the actual game is kind of short, so it doesn't matter that much. Um, but some people think that that is the best way to get the Nemesis system or things like it to shine. To just say, hey, yes, sometimes there will be an enemy that will just get too strong, you know? And maybe it should become, like, a Nemesis from Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, recently remade, where, you know, it'll just chase you and you have to run from it where it becomes almost like Mr. X in RE2. Um, but yeah, like, sometimes it can just be hard to let the story use the cool things that the game has been built up to use, you know? Um, and that's its own problem. Um, but the thing is, is that, like, looking past the, the lame-as-heck final boss... And the weird stuff that has to happen to the lore to let this game happen. Like, because obviously people... Th this is almost a thing where it's like, oh, how come we never heard of this? Oh, for obvious reasons, you know? Like, oh, duh, no, of course we never heard of this. Like, of course Sauron, being the dickhead that he is, would erase all history of, of Celebrimbor existing and, like, try to make sure that no one knew about him. And, like, we know a little about him, but, like... Of course, Sauron would take credit for just being the only guy who made the ring. Oh, that reminds me. Got a little checklist. Oh, I can take that off, too. Wow. I'm blazing through these. Um. So, yeah, it's a thing where, like, um. of course, Sauron would erase uh, Celebrimbor's help. And the civil war that Celebrimbor caused using the, the powers would just be written off as just one of the million other uh, orc civil wars. All production babies. Hell yeah. <laughs> Going to say something mean, but never mind that. Whenever Pat of Pat stares at looks at uh, production babies, he'll usually say, hey, good job fucking during the development. It's a little crass, don't you think? Um, but yeah, like, the game is unable to deliver on a lot of its own, like, ideas sometimes. Uh, and it's that's just kind of a shame, because there's so much cool in this game. Like, the Nemesis system is so fun, but, like, just ending the story and just not having it, and, like, it doesn't really come up that much, is like, eh, you know? And, like, they call those guys the, the five fingers of the talons of the hand of the black hand of Mordor um, and so I don't actually know if those guys are like I don't know if those are real nemesis orcs that they made uh, or if those are even randomly generated but like those guys just kind of showing up doesn't exactly like they're here and they're five 
There are there are some orcs. They're here. Like, it's all right, but like, eh, you know, they're just some guys. You already have the big, like, the big crazy reveal of like, hey, remember your biggest nemesis? He's back. And like, when I originally played uh, several years ago, um, like, that was like, oh shit, he's back. Because like, I remember I killed that guy like five times. At one point, I finished a fight and didn't even get a chance to like, move on because another band of orcs showed up and in it was that same nemesis. And like, the ba the fact that he was back for like, like an eighth time. Part of it was that he killed me multiple times, but I actually had very few deaths. I think I had a few like game overs, but not deaths. Cause like death is actually a part of this game because death will advance the time. And it means that infighting will happen between the orcs. They will go and do things. They will change like ranks. Some of them will advance in power. Some of them will die on their own. Some of them will just lose power. Um, and I feel like that's a very smart mechanic that doesn't get talked about a lot. Um, because dying is sometimes just like, it's just not fun in some games, you know? It's just not fun to die. It's not fun to fail. But in this, death is just one of the things that triggers a state change in the world. And that's cool. Compared to Dark Souls, where like, death does not mean you can't beat the game it just means you drop whatever souls you have and like that might mean you lose a level but the thing is theoretically you can just beat the game leveling up on boss souls and you usually get enough souls based on and you usually get like um a homeward bone with the boss souls or like in hylix dying is the only way to level up because you die and then go to the afterlife and in the afterlife is the machine that turns xp into power and it does so at a rate of like two to one, I think. Something like that. Um, and so like you'll miss out on on levels if you don't die at all. And so like dying just means that like, well, then you should probably dump some stuff in the in the hole in the machine. Um, and in this, like dying can end up making the game harder because the orcs will all advance in power and especially the one that killed you will advance in power. But like it's still an interesting thing, you know? Um, and so, like, there's just so much good in this game, but to my knowledge, the Nemesis system was actually, like, totally copyrighted, and, like, you can't just use it. And because of the, the way that the Tolkien estate and the, the licensing for these games are, like, we got the two games and then the DLCs, and, like, I don't really think we're getting much more after that. It's been several years. The last one came out in, like, 2017, 2018, and we're not getting more. Like, we haven't gotten more, and we would have by now, right? Maybe when the Rings of Power show comes out, but I feel like we already would have gotten the development. Um, this is a minor thing, but if you're making a, a sequel or a prequel or a new entry in the timeline, um, and you want to make a video game tie-in, just don't make it a licensed game that's a copy of the game. You know? Because the games that are not direct tie-ins to their movies end up being awesome like hulk ultimate destruction is not a direct time uh, tie-in to the movie that it that it came out next to but the game itself is awesome like it's awesome it's fun hulk ultimate destruction is great um kotor was actually supposed to be a licensed game for the phantom menace Orc Walla. JB Blanc was the Tower Nemesis Orcs. Hey, man, what's going on? Steve Bloom, naturally. Phil Lamar was Ratbag? And of course, Matthew Mercer's in here. But they got Phil Lamar in this game, and they didn't... <laughs> they just had him voice like a, like a grummy little gross little guy? Why? <laughs> Yeah, KOTOR was supposed to be a licensed game for either Phantom Menace or uh, Attack of the Clones. I don't remember which one. Um, but they were like, hey, you can either make a, a direct licensed game or you can set it like a million years ago and make it irrelevant to the story, but tell your own story. And they went with that. And KOTOR 1 is awesome. Very dated by now. Um, little, little clunky and hard to play. Um, and KOTOR 2 is also awesome, although it's unplayable without fan-made mods and patches. Well, it is playable, but it's just not as good. Um, uh, 
and like this came out because of the Hobbit coming out. But it's not about the Hobbit. It's an interquel or a prequel or a midquel or whatever. Um, and like, God, it's so much cooler for that. Like, if this was just a licensed Hobbit game, like that wouldn't have been that cool. And there actually already is a licensed Hobbit game as well. Um, and like, I'm almost kind of sad to say this, but like the the way of licensed games is kind of gone, you know? Like, you don't really get, like, a movie comes out and then a game comes out with it. Like, that's not a thing. Like, that almost happened for The Dark Knight. It did happen for Batman Begins, but, like, it didn't happen for The, for the Dark Knight, and that game turned into Arkham Asylum, which is its own thing and is really cool. Um, and in the same year, the Iron Man movie game came out. Oh, shit. The Iron Man movie game came out, and it was bad and kind of killed it like killed the genre of having licensed games um and that's a shame because like the only way that this would have happened is because we would have gotten a licensed game you know we almost got like a like a proper licensed game but then it turned into this and that's that's great um so let's take a look what else do we have in here i technically only have 60 percent because of all of the collectibles that i didn't get um, but we have Lord of the Hunt. You remember the, the missions that we did with Torvin where we just hunted some beasts? That's this whole DLC. That's kind of it. Nern is the name of the area. Okay. Can we, thank you. The Bright Lord is where you play as Calibrimbor. Um, it's cool. And like, if this game were to become like a genre, like in the way that Dark Souls is a genre, and like every new Dark Souls, it's like, what's the new Poison Swamp? What's the new Anna Orlando? What's the new Ornstein Smo? What's the new Gwyn? You know, this would almost be feel like, um, you know, a, a, a very small entry in the way that like the Dark Souls Three DLC feels like a very small Dark Souls entry because like in, um. In the Ring City, it's like, here's your new Anna Londo, here's your new Poison Swamp, here's your new callback to DS1, here's your new Berserk reference. And this is this is like a story that you would tell using Shadow of Mordor, just very small and using the same assets. Um But yeah, it's it's just a thing of like this is cool, it's a small self-contained story, and like if the game was just this, like if, if this game came out and maybe if it wasn't sold for 60 bucks, cause that might be a bit much, but if the game came out and it was just this, just the bright Lord, that honestly might be cooler. Cause like Talion's all right and all, but like conceptually the idea that like, Hey, you're playing as that guy. That's cool. This is almost like a semi roguelike score attack thing. Um, that lets you get a bunch of runes to go be busted in the main game with. But yeah, it's like a like you'll randomly just get more war chiefs and captains and you have to go kill them and chase them and this is exhausting to play, so I will not be doing it. I will come back and do these two. And for reference, this is him as he is alive. This is the shot of him in the ending when he's like, it's time for a new ring. And I don't know what the hell he means by that, by the way. You can play as Lothariel. You can play as that guy who killed himself. Like, we don't even fight this guy, though. Like, we fight... He, he kills himself and becomes Sauron. And, like, it's unclear how that works or why that happened or whatever. Or what the hell? Maybe it's, like, a thing where, like, Talion's was a blood sacrifice and he summoned the Elf Lord who made the rings. And then this guy was a blood sacrifice and summoned Sauron, who is the Lord of the Rings. But I don't get how it works, really. It's kind of confusing, but whatever. Uh, Lord of the Hunt. I don't know what this is. I think this is just like a, a skin that you get for doing this, like based on the, the wear of the typical stuff. And then we can play as this is the model that they use for Celebrimbor. His cheekbones are so high and he's got like, maybe it's a little blush on him or maybe it's dirt, but like, I feel like if his, if his cheekbones were a little 
uh, de-emphasized and his cheeks were a little fuller and he didn't have the crown and he let his bangs come over his face. Maybe if he put a cape or cloak or hood on, he would look a lot better is what I'm saying. But yeah, I know that like this becomes, like I know that Talion becomes like an evil guy, more of an evil guy, but like, I don't know. I guess I'll see it when I see it, but um, I will not be playing the DLCs right after this. Um, it might be a little bit, so sorry if you're excited for it, but I am going to play, I'm playing Valkyria Chronicles and the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion soon, I think. Spoilers, but hey. Um, and we also got more Dead Space coming out soon. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. And Alfred, this has been Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Very, very good time I've had here. So everyone have a good day. Thank you. Bye.